Astronomy to GCSE, Topic 1.4, Earth-Moon-Sun Interactions. So 1. Eclipses. From the Earth, the Moon and the Sun appear the same size in the sky. This is amazing and results in total solar eclipses, but more on that later. This amazing coincidence is due to the fact that the Moon is 400 times smaller than the Sun, and also 400 times closer. 2. The Lunar Phase Cycle Let's start with the New Moon. In a New Moon, none of the surface of the Moon can be seen. Next, a waxing crescent. Remember, waxing means getting bigger or growing. Crescent means a thin slither, if you like. One way you can remember the moon phases is when the moon is waxing, the only part of the surface you can see is on the right. The first quarter is when only a quarter of the moon can be seen. Remember, we can only see half the surface of the moon from Earth, so a quarter is halfway between a new moon and a full moon. A waxing gibbous is when more than a quarter of the surface of the moon can be seen, and it's still getting larger, so waxing. This means that the part of the moon you can see is on the right. A full moon is when all of the near side of the moon can be seen. A waning gibbous is when the moon appears to be shrinking, so the visible part of the moon is on the left, and most of the near side of the moon can be seen. The third quarter is when, like with the first quarter, only a quarter of the moon's total surface can be seen. With the third quarter, the part of the moon you can see is on the left. You have to remember waxing is on the right, waning is on the left. A waning crescent is a thin part of the moon still visible before the moon returns to being a new moon. You do need to remember the lunar phase cycle. But the key part is that new to full is waxing, and that full to new is waning. If you get them the wrong way round, you will lose marks. The length of the lunar phase cycle, which is the length of time between two successive full moons, is 29.5 days. 3. The lunar orbital period, or the time it takes the moon to do one full orbit around the Earth. To explain the lunar orbital period, I will draw a diagram. You will have to remember this diagram for the exam, so watch carefully. At position 1, the Moon is directly between the Sun and the Earth. In the time it takes the Moon to do one full rotation around the Earth, the Earth has moved along its orbit around the Sun, so it takes a bit more time for the Moon to return to between the Sun and the Earth. The lunar phase cycle is dependent on the relative position of the Earth, Moon and the Sun. So the lunar phase cycle is slightly longer than the Moon's orbital period. Last point I said that the lunar phase cycle was 29.5 days. The lunar orbital period is slightly shorter at 27.3 days. 4. The appearance of partial and full lunar and solar eclipses. So let's start with solar eclipses. A full, also called total, solar eclipse looks like this. The exam may ask you to describe or draw a total solar eclipse. If it does this, remember during totality, which is when the sun is totally covered up by the moon, the sky darkens and so the temperature drops, and the sun's corona, which is part of the atmosphere of the sun, becomes visible, because the light of the photosphere does not obscure the light from the corona. If you have to draw a diagram, then in a solar eclipse the sun cannot be seen as the light is obscured by the moon. This only happens at some locations on Earth for each solar eclipse. In the areas on Earth highlighted in brown, there will be a partial solar eclipse, where only part of the Sun can be seen. This area on Earth is called the penumbra. In the areas highlighted in orange, none of the Sun will be visible as the Moon will cover the entire Sun disk. 
These areas are called the umbra. Only in the umbra will totality occur. So just to recap, a partial solar eclipse is on the left and a total solar eclipse on the right. Remember these are solar, so it is the sun that is being obscured. Now for the two lunar eclipses. In a total lunar eclipse, the moon is always a full moon. The moon becomes darker, and most importantly, the moon becomes a red, orange, coppery sort of colour. Any red, orange or copper are an acceptable description. How a lunar eclipse is caused? When the moon is full, it can be close enough to Earth that Earth casts a shadow on it. This shadow is just like those on Earth, and it prevents the sunlight from reaching the object. This is why the moon gets darker. But surely there should be no light on the moon if it is in the shadow of the Earth. Well, remember why the sky is blue, because the shorter wavelengths of light scatter more than the longer wavelengths. Well, the longer wavelengths of light, like red, are scattered a bit by the atmosphere, but not enough to add to the colour of the sky, but enough to make some of the red light reach the moon. This is why the moon's a little bit red. A partial lunar eclipse happens when the moon is not in the umbra. So some of the light from the sun can reach the moon. When this happens, a curved shadow of the earth can be seen across the surface of the moon. Again, on the left is what a partial lunar eclipse would look like, and on the right, a total lunar eclipse. Five. Why do lunar eclipses not happen every full moon? The moon's orbit is inclined to the ecliptic about five degrees. So only on a few orbits every year will the moon be in the Earth's shadow at full moon. The moon has to be on the ecliptic for a total lunar eclipse to occur. Six. The length of both solar and lunar eclipses. Lunar eclipses can be seen much more often than solar eclipses as the shadow cast by the Earth is much larger than the shadow cast by the Moon. So from a given latitude, lunar eclipses are much more frequent than solar eclipses. As most of a hemisphere, which is half sphere, can see a lunar eclipse, they are not only more frequent, but they also last longer than solar eclipses. The totality of a lunar eclipse lasts from about 30 to 60 minutes. Remember, this is the totality, not the length of the whole eclipse, which may be many hours. On the other hand, solar eclipses only last a few minutes due to the size of the moon's shadow being so small. When I say a few minutes, I mean under 10 minutes, often under 5. 7. Shadow stick. You can do this experiment for your coursework. It can work well if you live in an urban area. As the sun appears to move across the sky, the direction and length of a shadow cast by a stick will change. At noon, which is when the sun is highest in the sky, the shadow will be shortest. So coming up to noon, the length of the shadow will decrease, and the length of sh the shadow will increase after noon. If you record shadow stick data at intervals, then you can plot a graph. Using the trend line, which is black in this case, you can find the local noon. The local noon is the time when the sun is culminating over your meridian, or more simply, when the sun is highest in the sky. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complex. The sun does not move across the sky in a uniform manner. There are many reasons for this. First, the, the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted to 23.5 degrees from the ecliptic. And also, we orbit the Sun in an ellipse, not a perfect circle, but more on that in Topic 2. Using the Sun that we see in the sky to give us the time using a sundial, we would get apparent solar time, or AST. The time we use in clocks is mean solar time. This is Greenwich Mean Time, which is also called Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC. Don't trip up on the word order of the acronym, it's in French. 
mean solar time or MST is unchanging, so it is a much better system to use in our clocks. There is a way to calculate mean solar time from apparent solar time, apparent solar time being the time you would observe from a sundial. This is using the equation of time. The equation of time is the difference between apparent solar time and mean solar time. To be precise, the equation of time is apparent solar time minus mean solar time. The equation of time changes throughout the year. An equation of time graph looks something like this. On the x-axis is the date, and on the y-axis is time in minutes. So this graph shows how many minutes you need to add to apparent solar time to get mean solar time. As the graph shows, you need to, sometimes you need to add minutes and at other times you need to take them away. The most minutes you ever need to add or subtract is 16. Earlier I didn't tell you the whole truth. I said that the equation of time was the difference between apparent solar time and mean solar time. Well this is only the case at Greenwich in London or at any other place along the same longitude, so above or below London. The difference between your apparent solar time and mean solar time, once the equation of time has been accounted for, gives you your degrees east and west of the Greenwich Meridian. So you can use the shadow stick experiment to calculate your longitude. For each four minutes that your apparent solar time, with the equation of time subtracted, is greater than the mean solar time, it means that your experiment was done one degree to the west. So for each degree you travel to the west, the apparent solar time gets four minutes greater than the time on your watch. This is why throughout the world we have time zones. 8. Sundials The point on a sundial is called the gnomon or a style. The gnomon has to be aligned north to south. The time displayed by the sundial is apparent solar time. So the equation of time and the longitude of the sundial will have to be taken into account to accurately use the sundial to display mean solar time, or as our clocks call it, Greenwich Mean Time. 9. The amount of daylight. The summer solstice is the day that has the most hours of daylight. The winter solstice has the least. The summer solstice varies depending on latitude, but in the UK the summer solstice is in June and the winter solstice is in December. The curve that the sun takes across the sky on the summer solstice is larger and higher than the curve of the equinox or the winter solstice. Because the curve is larger, the sun is above the horizon for a longer period of time so the day is longer. This means that in winter the sun rises later and sets earlier, and in the sun, summer the sun rises earlier and sets later, giving more daylight. 10. The aurorae. The aurorae appear as streamers of coloured light in the sky near the magnetic poles. To have a look at the aurorae, go to this Wikipedia link. I'll pop it in the description. The aurorae are also called the northern lights if they're in the northern hemisphere and the southern lights if they're in the southern hemisphere. The aurorae are caused by electrons which are emitted from the sun and come to the earth as solar wind. These then collide with molecules in our atmosphere and cause them to excite. Upon de-exciting, these molecules in our atmosphere emit light. The wavelengths and therefore colour of the aurorae depend on the element whose atoms were being excited. So the colours for the aurorae are associated with certain elements. For example, red light is caused by oxygen high in the atmosphere. That's the end of topic 1.4 on Earth-Moon-Sun interactions. Thanks for listening and watching.